What is going on, world? It is Sunday, and I wasn't able to go to church today. But luckily, we have the Rev Ike, Rev Ike readily available. And this video, he is talking about controlling the way your mind operates. I want to say Saturday is actually the Sabbath day, the seventh day, because Sunday starts the new week. But uh, I might start doing these on Saturdays instead, just to try to be biblically correct. But uh, anyway. Yeah, I'm going to just do that. But uh, without any further ado, let's see what Mr. Ike, the late great, has to say. You see, when you know what the mind is like, then you know how to relate to it. When you know the mind and its laws, you become a master. When you know, as Reverend Ike says, quote, unquote, God is thought, and the Lord is the law by which thought operates. Then you know how to operate with it. Man, too many times, unconsciously and ignorantly, gives away his God power to the wrong things. Nothing can work against a man unless a man gives that thing, either consciously or unconsciously, his God power to work against him with. And so now we're taking a new look at ideas. We're taking a new look at our minds, how it operates, and the things that operate in our minds so that we may be in control. Are you in control or are you being controlled? It's going to be one or the other. Let's put the question in the first person and repeat it after me. Am I in control or am I being controlled? Am I in control or am I being controlled? Am I in control of my mind or is my mind being controlled? Am I in control of my mind or is my mind being controlled? And that's another interesting thing about the mind. The mind is going to be controlled. The mind is going to think. Something is going to eat the energy of the mind. Something's going to feed on it. The mind is going to work. Even if you don't work it, somebody else will work it. Something else will work it. That's why the work of the mind is really the true work of man. It is the true father's business. And if you don't take care of your, your mental work, your spiritual work, your mind work, then the world will take it over. This is one of the reasons over the past few weeks I've taken the extra time here in these classes to study and to give you the benefit to overhear, it, to overhear me studying so that we may learn together and benefit together because the work that we're doing in these classes and these sessions this is eternal work this is something which we must accomplish and the sooner we accomplish it the sooner we get out of suffering for it is the destiny of every man to come to the knowledge and practice of his divine self-mastery this is your destiny. This is your eternal assignment. And you suffer until you do it. Until you become a master and take up the mastery of your mind and affairs, your consciousness and experience, then you're a slave. And you know what happens with a slave. A slave always catches hell. A, what is a slave? A slave is one who has somebody else for a master. Aha! Uh -huh. I never heard that de definition before. But that's what a slave is, you see. What is a slave? A slave is someone who has somebody else for a master. A slave is someone who has somebody else operating his mind. Like the world, for example. 
Even the Apostle Paul was right on when he said, To whomsoever you yield yourself servants to obey, his servant you are. There's something I want to rub in here because I think somehow or the other, maybe some of you have the idea that these classes are optional. Well, if it's, it's a little too chilly tonight. I'm going to tell you something. You are going to have to learn this somewhere, sometime. That's why I spent most of the winter here. Because this time I plan to graduate. Some of you know what I mean by that, some of you may not. And you can take as long as you wish to, but you're going to catch hell until you do it. I've had enough of hell. Say that with me. I have had enough, I have had of, enough hell. of hell. So if you've had enough of hell, then you're going to have to learn the laws of heaven. Because you see, to live in heaven, you have to live by the law. <laughs> it's a highway up to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. The consciousness, the, the consciousness, yes, the mind, the heart must be purified of all ungodliness, of all ungoodliness before you can live in heaven. That's why I'm telling you that this business of like some of the organized Christians think that just physical dying gets you to heaven. No, I've got news for you. You have got to learn the law before you can live in heaven. Of course, the law of heaven is the law of thought. It's the law of mind. It's the law of I am. It's the law of consciousness. It's the law of awareness. I want to go back over and underline in red a former statement of a moment ago. This spiritual instruction is not optional. I want to remember to tell the Sunday people that. What did I say? This spiritual instruction is not optional. It's not optional. You can delay it. You can neglect it. I'm wondering if I did a video on this one already. I'm not sure. I hope I didn't. But anyway. You cannot do it. And that prolongs your suffering. It prolongs your time in purgatory. And I'm not talking about an after death of the physical body kind of purgatory. You see, when I say heaven, hell, purgatory, and I use all of those theological, ecclesiastical terms, I'm not talking in the same frame of reference as usual. Because here again, heaven and hell, purgatory, and all, all that stuff, these are conditions of the mind. Even that famous character, D-E-V-I-L, is a psychic entity, a resident of the mind. But thank God you can tell him you won't eat here. You see, you've got to learn to stop these things from eating you up. I think the last video I did on him was limit, limiting self-doubt. Sorry for interrupting so much, but... So when negative ideas present themselves at the table of your mind, what are you going to say to them? You won't eat here. Because, you see, God has given each individualization of himself, which you are, a measure of faith, a measure of itself, a measure of divinity. And you're not to feed that to swine. You're not to cast your pearls before swine. Where your attention goes, the power flows. It says that Reverend Ike says that, but I don't think he's the first one who said that. It's the truth anyway, regardless of who said it. 
Now, that brings me to something else that may just, some of you, you're going to have to hold on to your hat. Do you know the truth is not the truth because Jesus said it. The truth is the truth because it is the truth. And Jesus said what he said because it was already the truth. I was reading again. They've got this ongoing argument about scriptural inerrancy. I was reading about that again today. How ridiculous. The truth is not the truth because anybody said it. If nobody says it, the truth is yet the truth. Which reminds me to run my little old joke past you again and again. That may be slightly off the subject but yet on. About the little old lady who was praying. Asking the Lord to send her something to eat. Because she and her children were hungry. And some mischievous boys heard her praying. Oh please Lord. Oh please Jesus. Send some food for me and my children. And they said, why don't we play a trick on the old lady? Okay. So they went and got a chicken, a live chicken, and dropped it down her chimney into the fireplace. The chicken came fluttering down the fireplace, down the chimney, into the fireplace. And the little old lady jumped up off of her knees and clapped her hands and said, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and she grabbed that chicken and <laughs> started preparing it to eat, just shouting and talking in tongues all the way. Finally, the kids, they were just bowled over with laughter outside the house listening. And so finally, they knocked on the door and came in and said, Well, Miss So-and-so, as you know, we're sorry to tell you, the Lord didn't send you that chicken. We dropped that chicken down the chimney. She said, glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Even if the devil brought it, God sent it. <laughs> well, you have to do your best in knowing how to handle that joke. <laughs> This has been Sewa TV. I am Trey Day. Y'all have a good start. To